This is going to finish up Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at the subject of why me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable. Number one, because of his purpose. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord's purpose was to save anybody who chose of their own free will to believe the gospel. And his purpose is to keep our salvation even unto the day of Christ. So from the moment you were saved until the rapture, you don't have to worry about being separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to His purpose. Even in trials and tribulations, all things will work out for good when it comes to eternity. And all the trouble you face down here will get you something good when you get to the judgment seat of Christ. All the suffering you did for the Savior and all the trouble you had because you wanted to do something for God will pay off at that time. It is His purpose to save me and to keep me. And that is why me and the Lord are inseparable. It is His purpose to not let anybody take me from His hand or pluck me out of His hand. Romans 8.29 says, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable because of predestination. Notice the phrase, for whom he did foreknow. The Lord knew me and knew I would choose him of my own free will. He knew that I would choose of my own free will to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knew this before he even made Adam and Eve. He said about the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. The Lord knows all things through his foreknowledge. And I chose to get in Jesus Christ, and it was the Lord's purpose to predestinate everyone who gets saved. Everyone who gets saved is predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. And the predestination doesn't have to do with your salvation. It's something that happened to you because you are saved. It's, it comes after the salvation. The moment you believe the gospel, right after that you're predestinated. Predestination isn't what saves you. It isn't that God predestinated some to go to heaven and predestinated some to go to hell. He chose from the beginning that anybody who chose to get in Christ would be saved and they were then predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. Pretend you're driving down the road and you see a hitchhiker. So you pull over next to him and say, If you get in, I'm headed to Atlanta. And he, he chose to get in. And once he got in, it was predestinated that he was going to Atlanta. But he had to choose to get in. Uh, just like I chose to get in Christ. And since I chose to get in Christ, I'm predestinated to go to heaven. Uh, the Lord said, whoever gets in Christ is going to heaven. And I chose to get in. Just like whoever was going to get in that car was going to go to Atlanta. And that person would have to choose to get in. I'm inseparable with the Lord for that reason. And unlike a car, there is no way out of Christ. I had free will to get in, but I don't have free will to get out. Because even if I quit believing, he abideth faithful. He can't deny himself. I'm predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. So I'm going to have a body just like him. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Romans eight twenty nine says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. There's that word again, the firstborn of every creature. The Lord Jesus Christ was the first person born of God. He always existed in eternity, but he came down in likeness of sinful flesh. Uh, he, he had an earthly mother who was with child of the Holy Ghost. The man Christ Jesus had an earthly mother. Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man at the same time. He didn't just begin at that time. He had always been here in eternity. But in the sense, in this sense, he was the first person born of God. So nobody was ever born again until after the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the firstborn. But after the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood, then it was possible to be born again. And now I'm inseparable to the Lord because of his predestination. And I chose to get in, but I have no choice to get out. And I'm not chosen because I'm any better than anybody else. I'm chosen because I chose to get in. The Lord voted me in. The devil voted for me not to be in. So I voted for me to get in, and that broke the tie. I'm in. And to get me out, you would have to amputate part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which you can't do. I'm bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. But now number three. We've seen two reasons why me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable. Number one, because of his purpose. Number two, because of predestination. Number three, because of his protection. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we then say? to these things if God be for us who can be against us the Lord told Joshua back there in the book of Joshua that no man would be able to handle him in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5 it says there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee and this made Joshua probably the most fearless man in the Bible even more fearless than King David even. More fearless than Samson or anybody else. He knew that he couldn't be beat. And you can't stop somebody that doesn't believe they can be beat. And if their faith is in the Lord, who is their protection, then they're not going to be beat. Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is for me, and he is in me. I have something better than what Joshua had. What God said to him was about physical things, but his, but his promise to us is a spiritual thing. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Jesus was triumphant on the cross. I have the victory in me, and God knows through his foreknowledge that I have already overcome the wicked one, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you can't stop a man once he realizes that all he has to lose is the temporary things here on this earth you got to get that in your head. And you get that in your head by constantly setting your affection on things above. And it's a hard thing to do in this age we're in. But me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable because of his protection. And number four, we're inseparable because of propitiation. At one point, me and God were at enmity. I was the enemy of God. But then in Romans 8.32 it says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So I'm inseparable from the Lord because he is my propitiation. He appeased the wrath of God for me when he was made my substitute. He took my place on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And it pleased the Lord to bruise him. The Father's wrath was appeased when the Lord Jesus Christ drank the cup of God's wrath on the cross. He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And this is part, he delivered his own son because this shows us how much God loved us. Because a man loves his son and his, you know, his kids more than anybody. But Romans 8.32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The best thing you can get is free. And the, that's the free gift of salvation. Uh, Romans 8.33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. You can't lay anything to my charge. My account is spotless. I have the spotless account of Jesus Christ on my never-dying soul. I chose to get in, and I'm inseparable from him. It is God that justifieth. He is the one who declared me righteous. And number, number five, me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable because of his purpose, the predestination, his protection, his propitiation, and now because he's my prayer partner. Romans 8.34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Notice Paul preaching the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection proves that Jesus Christ is God. But me and the Lord are inseparable because he is my prayer partner. He never forgets to pray for me. And he is my mediator. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And I pray in Jesus' name to the Father. He is my way into the throne room. And I don't get in there by talking to a psychic or a Catholic priest. I have access to Father because of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is my prayer partner. And when I'm on my knees, he's there with me. So me and the Lord are inseparable because of his purpose, his predestination, protection. He's my propitiation. He appeased the wrath for me. He's my prayer partner. And you may not think about this much, but you would love to talk to maybe your favorite preacher or your favorite singer or athlete. But those people are mortal men that are going to go back to the dust. And they don't even know who you are. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't give you the time of day. But the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You have access to talk to God who made the worlds anytime you want to, 24-7. If you wake up in the middle of the night, he's there. If you're at work, he's there. He, he goes everywhere with you. He's always available to talk. And prayer is a very neglected thing with people because they don't realize they can talk to the most powerful being in existence. But me and the Lord Jesus Christ are inseparable. And when people say that we are, that we aren't inseparable, I'm persuaded otherwise. So number six, we're inseparable because I'm persuaded otherwise. When somebody says you can lose your salvation, when somebody says the Lord's not with you or, the, or God's not real, I'm persuaded otherwise. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Uh, none of that stuff's going to separate me. ISIS, and terrorists, and Bin Laden, and Saddam Hussein, and Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, Joseph James D'Angelo, or any other killer couldn't cut me loose from Christ. No tribulation I face on this earth can separate me from his love. And if I lose everything today, my clothes and my house and my wife, I still have the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody said, when you find out he's all you got, you found out he's all you ever needed anyway. So no perils or sword can separate me because I have a sword myself and it's the same one that's going to shoot out of his mouth at that great and dreadful and terrible day of the Lord. Romans eight thirty six and 37. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So I'm going to have the victory over death, hell, and the grave because Jesus Christ triumphed over principalities and powers. I'm a winner, I'm a winner either way if I go or if I stay. And I get all this through him. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us, and people are always talking about winning. Some rapper came out with a song called, All I Do Is Win. But you're a loser unless you choose to get in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 38 through 39. 
Now here's that word for I am persuaded. When people tell me the opposite of what I'm saying here, I'm persuaded otherwise, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. A death can't separate me. If you die, all you're going to lose is the temporal things of this world. But if you're saved, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. A life can't separate me. Nothing I do in this life or run into in this life can separate me from him. Angels can't separate me. Michael the archangel couldn't. The fallen angels couldn't. Principalities and powers can't do it. The spiritual wickedness in high places can't touch my soul. Uh, things present and things to come can't separate me. The devil in the flesh won't be able to touch my soul. The trials and tribulations of my future can't touch my soul. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Nor height nor depth. Nothing in, in outer space or up in the deeps or down below the earth and hell can separate me from the love of God. And I bet there is powerful creatures in heaven that the Lord never even told us about. And even they wouldn't be able even to separate me. And there are probably creatures in the sea right now that only the Lord knows about. Because they haven't been discovered. But even if they caught you and killed you, that couldn't separate you. Your parents can't separate you. Your husband or wife can't separate you. Your holiness grandmother-in-law can't separate you from the love of God. Uh, nothing can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord because I chose to get in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Lord's purpose to be inseparable to any man who chooses to get in.